Okay, this video demonstrates the new backend technology developed for Wiki New Zealand. This is a web application called Grace, which provides a pipeline for taking open data in various forms, such as spreadsheets or CSV, and converting it into tables and graphs, which can be seen on the wikinewzealand.org website. This application was developed because data is often released in human-readable forms, but isn't actually very easily converted into machine-readable forms and then easily charted and manipulated and compared against one another. So for example, here is a spreadsheet that comes from the Ministry of Social Development. It has many sheets in it. As you can see, here is one of them. The data in this table has been formatted for human consumption, and that's quite nice, but it doesn't allow us to easily chart it and thus see trends. So this application, Grace, provides this pipeline which allows us to take a document such as that spreadsheet that we just saw and turn it into charts. The first step of the pipeline is importing where the file is in uploaded into the system. Grace supports CSV and Excel. It has some support for SDMX and we'll add other types soon. It can also, with a little effort, import data from systems such as CCAN. Let's go and have a look at one of these source documents. This document comes from the Ministry of Education and is a time series of student data from 1996 or so. When we import a document, we can add metadata about it. This metadata is often important to understand the context of the data, and we record things such as definition of terms that are used in the document, or notes on how the data was calculated or treated or things they deliberately left out. Let's have a look at this document and see if we can extract some data from it. So this is the extractor, which is the second step of the pipeline after importing. In the extractor, you can see all of the sheets from the Excel file. When they're imported, we ignore information such as formatting and headers that you may have seen in the document at the start. So you're just left with the data. This is a table that's on one sheet of this document. This is student role by student age from 1996 to 2014. This is a relatively simple table. Let's use the extractor to get some data out of it. When you use the extractor, you mark out keys in the data. So across the top here is the year in which the data was collected. Let's add this as a key. This key has a name. It is year. And the key also has a type. The type is what type of data this is. As you can see, we have several types available here, and we expect to add more in future. So right now, this is year. One nice thing about typing is that it doesn't matter what document we get data from. If we say that the data in this document here is keyed by year, and in another document is keyed by year, then later on, we can make meaningful comparisons between the data because we know we have the same year. Or, for example, if one document refers to New Zealand as New Zealand in full, and another document refers to New Zealand as NZ, if we say they are both countries, we will be able to compare them meaningfully anyway. Let's add this next key down the left here, which is the age of the student. We'll call this student age. And that data isn't, doesn't have a reasonable type, so we will just call it text. Now we need to add a label and a type for the values. The values are at the intersection of the keys. So here, it's all of the cells from here down to the bottom right. So this is the number of students who were that age in that year. So we'll call it number of students. And the type of the values is simply a number. Now let's save this extraction. As you can see, the data has been successfully extracted. Each row here, which is now in our database, represents one cell from the original document. So in 1996, when the student age is 10, this is the value. And we have the type of this data as well, which will be useful later. 
Let's go have a look at a slightly more complicated one. Let's have a look at that document that I showed you initially. It looks like this, remember. So you can see here it's been formatted for human consumption. So it has quarter across the top, and then down this side it has various demographics. This is data from Ministry of Social Development about recipients of benefits. So it has gender as a heading, then male and female, and then it has ethnic group, and the various ethnic groups that they record. You can see here they've merged some cells. This can make things somewhat confusing. Let's go back and have a look at this document in the extractor and see what we can do with it. So as you can see, the formatting has all been removed. I may actually use this table instead. This table is interesting in a further sense in that you can see some columns are numbers while other columns are percentages of the total. So you can see that the values actually have different types depending on the column heading. The extractor can deal with this, so let's have a go. The first key you can see here is the quarter. Let's add that. And the quarter has a type. The second key is across here, and it's the type of benefit. I'll call it benefit type. And those cells are of type text. The next column here is the measure, how many there were or what percentage there were. And that is of type text as well. Now we have this column here, which is a little more confusing. As we saw before, the headings are in line with the categories themselves, and there are merged cells here which can cause problems. So to deal with this, first we make a key out of the column. This key we will call demographic, and it is of type text. Now we split this key. When we split a key, we mark some cells in the key as ones that we want to treat differently as headers. So let's do that with gender, ethnic group, age group, continuous duration, and the total. Now that we've done this, we'll call those the demographic category. So you have a demographic category of gender, and then under that you have a demographic of male and female. demographic category is also text. Now we need to add a quick rule to make this all work for the case of the merged cells. Now we should add types for the values. As we saw before, the type actually depends on the green key here. If the green key says number, then really these are numbers. And if the green key says percent, then really these are percentages of the total. So what we can do is go up to this key and choose to use it when selecting the value units. Now, down here, we can set what we want to call these values. So this is the number of beneficiaries receiving this, uh, these benefits, and that is a number. While when it's a percent, this is a percentage of beneficiaries receiving it. And this is a different type, percent. One other thing you can do is you can add extra information, extra metadata to these extractions. This is useful if the document has a bunch of metadata that applies across the whole thing. But the individual table has some notes about special things that only apply to it. This particular table doesn't have any, but we could add some here if we wanted. Now when we save this, there will be some errors. Let's have a look. So it's had a go at extracting a lot of this data, and it's had a lot of success, but there are some mistakes. We can see here that in these particular cells, the value was NA. The value unit, being percentage or number, they both tried to parse NA and didn't understand it. So let's go back and see what's happened. Back here, we can see that it is these cells here 
Evidently, this data was either not recorded or perhaps was too personally identifiable, so it was left out. We can fix this. We add a rule for the values, and we say that when the value is equal to NA, we will just skip it. Now let's save this again. As you can see, the data has been successfully extracted this time. Now from here we go to the third step in the pipeline, which is the creation of tables. When we create tables, we select one or more extractions and merge them together to make a table. In this case we'll just select this one. But the reason why it's important that we can merge one or more together is if in three months time the Ministry of Social Development decided to release data for the latest quarter, we can combine an extraction from that new data with an existing table. The table will then simply extend and add more data over time. So let's create a table from this. The table we will call benefit data. Obviously we would pick a more reasonable name if we were doing this for real. We can give it a copyright license and the search category is used on the wikinewzealand.org website. We can also add tags for the website. Note that this is all being done in a web browser. So here is our table as it has been created. As you can see, we have the types. And as you can see, tables and extractions are multi-dimensional. So this has one, two, three, four, five dimensions to it. And we can tell to the nearest cell almost everything about it. We know the quarter and we know that it's a time type. That will be useful when we are doing charting. We know the benefit type and the measure the demographic category and the demographic, and we know the value. We also know the type of that number. Now let's get on to creating some charts, which is the final step. One thing to mention about tables just quickly is that they are available out of a public API, but that will be released later on. This is the chart designer. This gives us a way to cut up the data that we just made and make all sorts of pretty charts out of it. It's had a go at making a chart for us, just to get started. So what it's done, as it said, that in 2014, quarter 3, what is the percentage of 18 to 24 year olds who have job seeker support? That's not a very interesting chart, so we can mix it up a little bit. How about we try moving demographic onto the axis? So now here is a chart showing the percentage of people by age group. We could perhaps change it to the number of people instead. We could also look at other types of benefits. Or potentially at the total. We could try changing it to a different type of chart as well. And here we might try and set a different color palette. Let's cut this up by ethnicity instead. So here we have benefit information by ethnicity and by other benefit type. Perhaps we could try a stacked column. We can order these as well. Perhaps it might make sense to have the largest ones on the left. Which we can do like this. We can give this chart a title. and a subtitle. We can also give a title and subtitle to this thumbnail, which as you can see is this minor representation 
of the actual chart. This thumbnail is used on the wikinewzealand.org website in search results. The positioning of this is a little bit strange, so we could move it to somewhere a little more sensible. We can also edit metadata for this chart. We can give it a license and categorize it for the website as well. In future, you will be able to put more than one table's worth of data into the chart designer. That way, you'll be able to chart data from multiple related tab um, unrelated tables together. This means you could compare benefit data from the Ministry of Social Development with tourism data from the Ministry of Business, Education, uh, Innovation and Employment. The chart designer will eventually be available on wikinewzealand.org for anyone to play with and to submit their own charts from the data we have collected so that they can be available for others to see as well. And there you have it. That is Grace, the web application that powers the backend of wikinewzealand.org.